Good evening, Glitter Goddesses. Happy Labor Day. Happy Monday. Happy Labor Day. Good evening. Tonight we're doing a very special show. Um, I'm doing tonight something I swore that I would never, ever, ever, ever do again. And anytime anyone's brought it up the last three years, I have said, I swore I was never doing that again. So stop asking me because it's never going to happen. I refuse. I am never making another one of these pockets that I am. <laughs> I hate decorating them. All right. So just being honest, it's just that they have so many flips and flaps. Here is one. First of all, let me tell you the positives. Okay. Let me tell you that. And this is a lesson to all of you to never say never because you never know. So, um, this is one of them um, and this is how it works. All right. So it looks like this and it's great. It can stand up on its own so you can put it as a display piece on a mantle as well because it has this triangular shape. So it's very sturdy. Um, it makes a great brag book for um, people who you went on a trip with and maybe they're not crafters and you have photos of them and their kids and you want to give them a little keepsake and something like that. So the way that it works is, is it's like a book and you turn it and then there's another two photos there and then you turn it and then you open it, open it and then you turn it and then you turn it and then you open it and then you just keep going through it. So what you end up having are one, two, three, four, five, six pockets. There's six pockets and then each of the pockets can hold a tag with a four by six photo. All right, each of the pockets can hold a tag with a four by six photo of in these larger pockets. And then I think these have to be cut down. Yeah, these look a little slimmer. These two have to be cut down a little bit, a little bit, but not too much, not too much. All right, now, the original one of these was made out of catalog envelopes catalog envelopes are a specialty envelope that usually you have to order. They're, they're not really kind of a, a thing that like they have it at Target or wherever. And I don't have any more because I swore I was never doing rose pockets ever again. But luckily for me, I did write a tutorial right when I, right before I swore off rose pockets forever, I wrote a tutorial on how to make them out of cardstock. This is my secret family. These are the kids I hire when I want to put photos in a project. These kids are probably not even related to this woman. <laughs> they probably have never met before this day. These are all models. All right. So um, we are going to make the one out of cardstock today is what we're going to do. Okay. And we are... Um, in the, in the manual, if you have the manual, there's three different tutorials in the manual. The one we're doing today is the one that's called folded pockets, I think. Folded pockets. Um, I'm gonna, I have it on my tablet. I can look it up. I just need to, um, I just need to get the name because apparently I don't know the name. Um... Yes, the folded pocket one is the one that we're doing today. Are we? Because does this look the same like the same family? My other my other family is in this other maybe. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, guys. I I know what I did. This is the one made out of the envelopes. See, I can see the flap of the envelope here. The folded pocket one will look exactly the same as this. 
it'll just be made out of cardstock. So why am I doing this? Let me go over everything from the top. Um, we have been tracking Hurricane Dorian here, of course, because it's headed towards Florida. Um, and seeing the devastation that it's doing in the Bahamas right now was very upsetting. So I wanted to do something. Um, and so I thought, you know, when you give, you should give in a way that hurts, you know, in a, in a way that makes you uncomfortable, I feel. And so, <laughs> um, and so what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to give, I, I'm doing something I swore, I don't like, I don't love doing, you know, I've, I have refused to do it for three years. I'm going to do it. I'm going to resurrect this tutorial and anyone who buys this tutorial now between now and Sunday at 11:59 PM. So that's Sunday, September 8th at 11:59 PM Eastern USA time. So between now and then I will donate the proceeds or what I would normally take home portion of that manual to the Bahamas Red Cross. Um, we have already raised close to $200. I'd like to get that to $500. Um, if we can by tonight, I think that would be super fabulous. If we could get to that, let me just see where we are right now. I got, let me do a quick count. Okay, so right now we're at 238. 238, so we're almost halfway there. We're almost halfway there. So um, we're almost halfway there. We just need 18 more people to get the tutorial and then we'll be at 500. So if you've never picked up this tutorial, I'm gonna go over it tonight. We're gonna make a rose pocket. It's great for the holidays coming up. Um, it makes a great gift because it's really simple, but it's also still fun because it's, it feels kind of like an infinite sort of a thing, you know, you keep, you feel like you keep opening it, you know, you're opening it forever because you can kind of just keep going around. So, um, the project is $14.95, $14.95. Now you do get three tutorials. It's three mini tutorials in it. It's this one, which is the one made out of the catalog envelopes. The one we're doing tonight, which is the folded pocket version, which is made entirely out of cardstock. And then there's one that I said simplified. I, I don't know how I simplified it, but it, it must be a, even more simple than this. Um, all right. So before we do that, I'm just going to switch to my computer screen. I want to show you something for the people who uh, people have been messaging me and emailing me about um, am I safe from the hurricane? Um, and so I wanted to show you this is this is a hurricane and this is how it affects the wind around it. OK, so um, this is the eye of the storm, of course, over the Bahamas. Um, this is Marsh Harbor, which is where the Coast Guard, the United States Coast Guard just landed to start mounting rescue missions. Um, I saw that on the New York Times. All right. And then all the way over here, right here, do you see this like little cutout? That's Tampa Bay and I live on Tampa Bay. And I live about here. All right. So I live right about here. All right. Fran in, and Kathy are not on this map, but Kathy, she would be way over here, but up, like off the screen. She'd be, she's off the screen. Um, so she'll probably be totally fine. Something really crazy would have to happen for, for her to be affected at all, really. And then Fran lives near Kathy. I think she's a little farther north, maybe. Um, so they're, 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 they will probably be fine. Um, I will probably be fine. Um, this green, what you see, the green that's covering where I am 
What that means is that I have between a 10 and 20% chance of experiencing tropical force winds. Tropical force winds are, I mean, I don't want to sound like they're not dangerous and they can't cause damage because, you know, they can cause damage, but they're really like, imagine a kind of a really bad thunderstorm where the rain is going sideways and the trees are whipping around. That's kind of that. They're not like a hurricane. Um, I slept through a, an entire tropical storm passing over the city of Miami when I lived in Miami. Miami is here, by the way, right here. Um, so it, it's not, they're not nothing. Um, but uh, at this point, our biggest concern where I am is flooding um, because all our river, our major rivers are active right now um, because we've had a very rainy, very wet summer. It's been raining a lot lately and our rivers are full. So that's our biggest concern, but it's, it's really something would have to drastically, drastically, drastically change. Okay. So, um, it's really okay. Uh, where we are, we are prepared. We prepared as if for a hurricane hitting us directly because it's original path. It did look like it could cross the state into the Gulf of Mexico and hit us directly. So we are fully prepared for a direct hit. Um, which we probably will not experience unless something crazy goes down. But if something crazy goes down, we are prepared for it. We are prepared for it. So you're total. So if you are worried about us, specifically me and intern Liz and Mr. Lifeguard, you really don't need to. I mean, you know, things could change. Of course, things could change. And I, of course, I ask you to keep the people of the Bahamas, the people of Florida, the people of Georgia, the people of North and South Carolina and your thoughts and prayers as they go through this. Because even now, the hurricane is so large that it's already affecting the coast of Florida. So um, point to Port St. Lucie. Um, this is Port St. Lucie right here. So this is Miami. That's where I used to live. This is Fort Lauderdale. That's where spring break is. This is Palm Beach. This is where all the millionaires live. Billionaires really live. And there's Port St. Lucie. V Vero Beach and Cocoa Beach, Daytona Beach. Um, and this Cocoa Beach area, this area right here, this is where the space shuttles are. All right. This kind of this like cut out right here. This is where the, the space shuttles are. And, um, I, I've mentioned this before, but my father-in-law, Mr. Lifeguard's, um, dad is the disaster preparedness officer for, uh, County space center. And so it's his problem when there's a hurricane, uh, it's his, it's his problem. Okay. So Port St. Lucie is where Deborah is. So, um, Please keep Deborah in your prayers, guys. Uh, um, keep her in your thoughts and prayers because the storm is already affecting her weather. And it, for a little bit of context, the Bahamas are 80 miles off the coast of Florida. If that gives you an idea, idea of the scale, this island here is 80 miles off the coast of Florida. Um, Florida is actually closer to the Bahamas than it is to Cuba. Well, because uh, um, Key West is 90 miles from Cuba. So... Um, even if it doesn't land, it can still cause storm surge, flooding, horrible winds, powers, power out. It can cause all kinds of problems for the people who live on the coastal United States. So even though it's out to sea here, just to give you an idea of how big the storm is, look at how it affects the Gulf. It's all, it's all crazy. So anyway, so I just wanted to show you that for those of you who are worried because I am in Florida, now you can see, um, this is Tallahassee right here. Um, and then I think Pensacola is like over here, right? So like Pensacola, cause I know here's New Orleans and Pensacola is only like three, three, five hours from New Orleans. So, all right. So. Um, all right. So there you go. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So you don't need to, um, I mean, I appreciate you worrying about me, but, um, if it's causing you stress and if you're, if you're like losing sleep over it, please don't, please don't. There's no need. There's no need. Okay. 
So I said anyone who shared the post about tonight's stream on Facebook would be entered to win a year of access to our archives of over 1500 videos from all the live classes we've done over the last decade. All right. So, um, but what I did do, um, what I didn't do is specify which of the posts that I made about it, you had to share. And so because of that, I chose a winner from each of the posts, the post on the Catherine Scraps page and the Catherine Scraps group. Uh, so there's one winner from the group and there's one winner from the page. Okay. And so I'm going to start with the winner from the page and the winner from the page is April white, April white. So April white, you won a year of access to the archives. Congratulations. Um, if you could just send an email to sales at katherinescraps.com and uh, with the with the email address that you have that you use for box and just let uh, Mr. Lifeguard know that you won the a uh, year of access to the classroom that your name's April and you, here is the email that I use for box so that's sales at katherinescraps.com that's sales at katherinescraps.com so you want a year if you already have a membership and you win, we'll just extend your renewal date by 12 months. So we'll just change when it renews. We'll add 12 months to whenever it renews. So we'll just, if it was going to be in, you know, September of 2019, we'll change it to September of 2020. And then the person who won from sharing the post I made in the group is Priya Shaw. So Priya, you won a year of access for sharing the post I made about tonight's stream in the Facebook group. So same deal for you, email sales at katherinescraps.com and uh, talk to Mr. Lifeguard and he'll help you get all set up. He'll help you get all set up. So those are the two winners of a year of access to the archives as a thank you for spreading the word about tonight. Thank you to everyone who shared the post and helped get the word out there. Um, I, um, I'm happy to do this, even though I'm gonna complain a lot because of r the rose pocket situation. Um, so d don't expect there to be no complaining. Don't expect there to be no complaining. Joanne, Joanne is the person who has requested rose pockets the most um, out of anyone. The most out of anyone. <sighs> so, I, when I posted this, she was the first person I thought of when I came up with this scheme. She was the first person I thought of when I came up with this scheme. Also, um, for those of you who are, who are here regularly, I have classes live every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern USA time and 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. And um, normally I don't have moderators, um, but I do have moderators tonight. Gretchen and Fran are generously donating their time this evening to help out with this um, disaster relief stream. Um, so thank you so much to both of them for donating their time and providing the links uh, for everybody while, um, while I'm working. So hopefully you guys will have any links you need. Um, again, I'm working on the Trifolio tutorial tonight. There's three projects in it and we're doing the one called Folded Pocket. Okay. Yeah. Folded Pocket. Just had to check. So now, I have chosen a paper for tonight, and I was up here printing and getting it cut out and all that jazz this afternoon, because I came up with the idea to do this show about 10 minutes before I posted that I was doing this show, 
if that gives you any indication of how prepared I am. Um, so <laughs> this paper is hot off the press. And this is Story of My Family by Echo Park, perhaps. Story of Family. And this, I use the digital one. I don't know if it's current or not. I, um, I have the digital collection. So I'm going to flip through the paper and then I'm going to show you, and then we're going to choose a cardstock. So here's the collection. This is navy, not black. So it's navy and coral which is actually a navy and peach is a very strong color combination. Okay. I'm no. All right. Yes, I printed these. So, here's the paper that we're going to be using tonight to do the decorating. The sewing machines are cute, aren't they? And then there are some solids. I'm going to kind of um, shift the solids to the back. This would be an example of more tiny prints in a paper. Yes, this one's not as bad as some other Echo Park collections. As I was going through it, I was impressed that they had. Um, there's a better mix than you usually see. The solid black, and of course, black ink is the ink I use the least because it's probably what most people would use the most, but they're not printing 12 by 12 sheets of colored cardstock all the time. So um, that black did take a lot of ink, but I have a black ink tank. This, I love this page. This page is great. Hello, Kimberly, how are you? All right, now, so that's the paper collection. The paper collection is Story of My Family by Echo Park. And now what we need to do is we need to find a sheet that we feel represents the collection as a whole. And we're gonna use that with the cardstock swatch book to pick a cardstock base color. And I am gonna let you guys make some decisions tonight since I'm already miserable to be doing this project anyway. So I figure we'll just bring democracy into the mix and make it even worse, okay? So once we have the color cardstock narrowed down to like one, two or three colors, <laughs> I'll let you guys vote. I'll let you guys vote. So I think that the stripe is probably our best bet. Although really we should probably just use navy. Um, but, you know, that can be one of the choices. Yeah, see this is the stripe is the one that I'm thinking of that would have all the colors. Just trying to flip through and see if there's anything better. Maybe these little houses. Eh, not really. They're not any like significantly better. All right, let's just go with the stripe. It is a really nice stripe. It's a really nice stripe. That's not bad for a Monday of a holiday. My sister said, why are you doing this on a holiday? Maybe you should do it tomorrow. And I said, tomorrow we might not have power. And she was like, oh, right. <laughs> oh, right. Ooh, that gray blue, this color right here. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. All right, so... I do have a charcoal. This is a charcoal right here. It's a little bit softer than black. You can see them right next to each other. We could definitely use charcoal. 
Um, it wouldn't be as intense as black. It'd be a little bit softer. And this is a softer collection. So charcoal's certainly one possibility. All right, I'm gonna have to stick post-its out the top of this. I'm starting to have a real post-it situation here. Not black, I don't think. I'm trying not to use um, black or craft for a base for like the rest of the year. I'm trying to make 2019 the year of colored cardstock. Um, why natural? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's our first one, which is we have this very peachy buff color. It's very light. It's called really buff but it will pull in some of these softer oranges. It's a little wimpy, maybe. I'd probably rather have the, um, bark is the color I ran out of. I don't have any more bark. I used it all on the Christmas album. There's not really much red in the collection. Now this wine, I mean, we do have this burgundy color that runs throughout. And the stripe does look good on the, yeah, that's a good point. Gretchen says not a lot of card sock shows on this album. That's true. Very little card sock shows on this album. So this, reddish color maroon so maroon's a possibility then and then I also thought about this yellow in my head but it's not as intense of a gold as this in the paper so I don't think I want to do it anymore oh maybe this is the one I thought of yeah solid gold um the thing about solid gold is that it's not really solid gold there's a little bit of green in it um so it, it leans a little mustard um, so it's not going to work with this collection. And then this one is really green. Well, it's mustard. So there we go. Now pumpkin. <gasps> no, this like pumpkin spice color, maybe. Okay. No, no pump, not pumpkin. Cayenne pepper. Maybe instead of the maroon. So a little more fall vibes than the maroon or do you we do we just straight up think the maroon is better maroon pumpkin spice no cayenne pepper maroon cayenne pepper I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna keep moving. Um, we're not gonna use any green. There's not a lot of green in this collection at all. So I'm just gonna skip past the greens. I'm gonna skip past this pool color. I don't know why that color exists. And then we have cornflower blue, but as you can see, it's just too blue compared to the blue in the collection. So I don't think it's gonna work. Yes, I did make this spiral notebook of all my papers. And then this is, um, this flag blue is the navy that we're using, but actually the blue in the collection is much bluer. Navy has some yellow in this, this flag blue color has a little bit of yellow in it. Um, it's a little bit warmer than a, a true navy and this is a true navy. So I'm going to say no to that. Plus we're already using it. All right. Ooh, but there's midnight blue. What do you think? I, it probably looks black on screen, but this is midnight blue. This is midnight blue. This is blue. So I, I think this one on camera, it probably does look black, but let me put a black next to it. Oh, congratulations, Lori. I think midnight is the winner. I think midnight is the winner, not to sway you guys. Cause I am going to let you vote. But I think Midnight's the winner. I don't know if you can see the difference between Midnight and Black. Midnight, Midnight actually looks blacker. I have mentioned this on 
camera before. But in real life, when you're going about your daily business, things that you perceive as black are almost never black. So the color black can look unnatural to you when you see an actual true black. So sometimes things that are close to black but not black can look more black than black would in a craft project or an art project. Okay. All right. So Priya, Priya's going to fight for cayenne pepper. I hope the comments don't get too spicy around here. All right. So here's what I'm saying. I'm going to eliminate charcoal because if I think we're going to use a not quite black, we should use midnight. So charcoal is out. Then we, we never came to a consensus between midnight and cayenne and maroon. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to let you vote. So if you want, this is maroon. So we've got maroon. All right. So here's maroon. So maroon, the benefit of maroon is it's a darker color. It's not going to read as black. It's still going to be kind of a bold choice. Um, and it's definitely going to be a warmer book. Um, all right. So and it's, it's going to read softer, um, than midnight will. And then we have cayenne. Cayenne is going to be the softest of the colors. And it's also the warmest of the colors. It definitely has a terracotta feeling and it's probably going to make it look the most fall, the most fall. And then for your boldest choice, we have the midnight blue, which is just great, I think. But you can choose. You can choose. So if you want maroon, going to type a one in the chat. If you want cayenne, type a two in the chat. And if you want midnight, type a three in the chat. The blue next to it is flag blue, which I'm already using for an album base, so I don't want to use it. Oh my gosh. I really thought Cayenne was going to run away with it, but then the Midnighters came in and now it's like really hard for me to get a consensus. I think Midnight is winning. Um, Gretchen and Fran, can you try and do a count? Like don't have to be exact or anything. We're not, you know, you're not election officials or whatever. But if you could give me an idea if there's a clear winner, that would be cool. That would be cool. And then while they're counting, I'm going to put aside my pattern paper. Chad's totally counting in Florida. Oh, are we going to have to toss a coin between two and three? We may have to. We may have to. <laughs> what is clear to me is that um, Maroon is not winning. So it's between, it's between Cayenne and, and Midnight. So it's not going to be Maroon. Sorry, Maroon. Mine is, my choice would be Midnight. I think it would be interesting to do a really, really, do you, do you have to be registered to vote? Um, you do. Okay. So it looks like they're the winner. Fran seems to think the winner is Cayenne with 23 votes. So 
we may have to flip a coin where is tiny cat when you need an unbiased opinion that's true where is tiny cat we need a cat scan we need a cat scan <laughs> joanne's casting like 10 votes for for three <laughs> cayenne did i say cheyenne i meant cayenne we're probably gonna go with we're probably gonna go with midnight guys i'm probably gonna call it i'm just gonna be the supreme court and and say <laughs> that's that's how we do it that's how we do it yeah i think yeah it's number two because all the repetitive votes for oh wow so Cayenne won by a lot. It looks like Cayenne won by like seven votes, according to Fran. So. Some voters of choice number three violated election rules. No, vote early, vote often. They were just, that's the advice. Oh, now there's a rebellion, Joanne. Okay. This is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. Not because. I think she's going to vote the way I want her to vote. But because Joanne is the person who has requested this project the most over the years, I will go with, she can be the tiebreaker. So Joanne can choose what color. I wonder what it will be. I have no idea. What color would you like your rose pocket? Midnight? Oh, what a surprise. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go with Midnight. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil is what we will call this album. Um, but yeah, if you if you have trouble picking cardstock, um, make yourself a swatch book because it can really, really help. Can we stipulate that if Joanne picks a color, she can never ask for another rose pocket? Okay, Joanne, do you agree to not request rose pockets anymore? Or should we make it out of cayenne pepper? Joanne ran away. There's <laughs> She's gone. She just poofed. <laughs> she's out she's gone she left okay so here's my midnight cardstock my solid cardstock is color mates smooth and silky and it comes from a store called the paper mill store the paper mill store.com and if you're looking for it, the best way is just to type the word silky and then the color you want. So if you were looking for this card sock, you would type silky midnight um, and so on. So the reason that it's called a rose pocket is because <laughs> Fran just, I, I gave in the links that I provided to Gretchen and Fran to help them out. There is a sentence that is, this is known as a rose pocket because the first variation was originally shared by a crafter named Rose. So <laughs> they were prepared for that question. Okay, so I am going to cut all my pieces um, really quickly. I think I'm just going to cut not like the ones that I need for um, you need one piece of okay two piece of okay up to 10 pieces of for pockets let me see why I said up to 10 up to 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh i see so you don't have to put a pocket on every single mm. oh 
Why? I'm really tempted to make an alteration to this book right now. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it straight. Okay. Let me start with the things that aren't pockets. And then maybe I'll know what I'm talking about later. So maybe after I've read the whole tutorial, I'll know. <sighs> okay. So I'm on page seven. Which is uh, prepping your album pieces. And it's, it's going to talk about what you're going to score things at. But at the top of that, it tells you what all pieces you need. All right, so there's one of the pieces. And I'm just going to do the first three right now until I kind of know what I'm dealing with. Because I've written some instructions that I'm like, I don't know what I meant. And I wrote this tutorial like three or four years ago. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. This cardstock is pretty square. I don't have to do too much weird trimming. All right, so we're going to start with the largest of the three pieces. And we're going to score it. Score. I literally have blocked it from my brain. I have blocked it from my brain completely. It no longer exists in my head. <laughs> it no longer exists in my head. All right, so now I'm going to score the other two pieces. Really, what the heck am I even saying? Uh, even the way I used, I do, I did the scoring in this album is different than the way I do it now. So it's like even my, the way that I write how to score is different. All right, everyone's calling for Tiny Cat. All right, so I have cut and scored my first three pieces. I'm gonna start with these. Next, I'm going to Fat Slab. Time to Fat Slab. which is fold along the score lines and burnish. It's an acronym for fold along the score lines and burnish.
All right. So the smaller pieces, they look like this. They're a V with a flat bottom and a hook on one end. Tiny cat would have picked cayenne. <laughs> this cayenne midnight debate is going to haunt me forever. It's going to be like, remember the when Catherine promised she would listen to us and then pick midnight anyway? All right, and then on the bigger piece, it makes this kind of like bird shape. All right. Okay. And then skip over the steps where I'm talking about how to make pockets and I'll come back to that. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so now we're on page 10. So I'm skipping all the rest of part two, which is all about how to make pockets. And now I'm going to assemble these three pieces and they're going to become the rose pocket. As soon as I read all my instructions and figure out what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, these guys go in the crack, right? And then I, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Okay, so on these two pieces, we're gonna put a line of quarter inch tape on the edge. Make a second one in cayenne. Oh. If you guys get the donations up to a thousand dollars, I will make a second one in cayenne. Let me, oh, maybe I should check the donations before I said that and made it higher. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I may have made a tactical error. Let me see where we are now as far as money. Okay. All right, you guys are at 378. So, so thank you everyone. We have $378 already for the um for the uh rose pockets will have to be renamed to Dorian pockets. <laughs> I will also rename them Dorian pockets. If we raise uh, if we sell enough of these to raise $1000 for the Bahamas after fees and everything. I'll tell you how many total need to be sold. Seventy two. We need to sell seventy two total. And we so so we have some ways to go. We have some ways to go. So I may not need to. I may not I may be in the clear. I may be in the clear. Uh, 
Oh, darn it. I said it was going till Sunday. You guys have like a whole week. Ugh. I'm going to have to make another stupid rose pocket. I can just feel it. No. No. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to put another line of the quarter inch tape directly along the, uh, along the score line. If you already have this tutorial from when I first released it years ago, I, um, and you donate to the Red Cross directly, the link in the description says, don't think of them as rose pockets. Think of them as a new project called Dorian Projects or Dor Dorian Pockets. All right. All right. So peel the tape off the edges and off the... All right, and so here's what you're going to do. You're going to bend this back so that both lines of tape are on the back and you just see the clean score line, okay? And then line that score line up right next to, not on top of, not over. You know, make sure they're just bumping up against each other. If you see a little sliver of cardstock in between them, that's better than if they're too close. All right, so, all right, and then we're gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So now it looks like this. Okay, so this is our one that looked like a, a flying bird and now it's got an extra wing sprouting out of its back. So now we're gonna fold it so that the extra wing is hanging down and we see our score line. Maybe she means the link in my video description. Maybe I messed up the video's description. All right. Okay. So now it looks like this. Okay. And we should be able to go like this and like this and like this and like this, which we did. So this is how it goes together and it works. Yay. Okay, let me fix the YouTube one. Um, hopefully I can do it without crashing the stream. Um, it probably won't change unless you refresh, but uh, I'll let you know after I fix it. And that way the people who watch the video later, I am going to be using this. Um, I see what happened. Okay, so supposedly all changes have been saved. I, cause I copied the link from Facebook and Facebook sometimes shorten links. So that's what happened there. So it's fixed now. If you refresh, it should work. YouTube says it's been fixed. Um, alrighty. Okay, so let's, count. We can put a pocket on any one of these flaps, but some of them don't have, they don't all have to have pockets and their pockets don't all have to go all the way up. So here's the ones that I'm thinking don't have pockets. I'm thinking I'm going to put X's where I don't want to do pockets. I'm going to put an X here. 
and an X here. Because these two are flush, see this one has a 1 8 inch little gutter, but these two are flush, so I think these we should just decorate like a little mini layout. This one we will have a will have a pocket, and this one will have a pocket. So one, two, three. four, five, six, seven, eight. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. So I think, I think we need eight pockets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make six pockets and we'll see how we do. So now the question is, should we make all like pockets that go all the way to the top because I think the answer to that is no. I think we should do angled pockets on these that are the outside so that yeah we should make interesting pockets. So this one will be angled angle and this one will be angled And I will give measurements for any variations. Um, for these on the inside here, I mean, this actually does close flush as well, this one. If you angle the pockets, you're going to have more to decorate. Oh, because I'm going to have to decorate behind the pocket. I'm regretting all my life choices now. You know what? This is for charity. We're going to angle all the pockets. Joanne says I have to work in the morning. Um, this video is going to stay on YouTube. This video is going to stay on YouTube. So if you have work in the morning, then the video will still be on YouTube. Okay. All right. So now I just have to figure out what are the measurements of these angled pockets. Um, and I think we should come down. Let's make them say like four and a half inches tall so let me tell you what the piece of paper the size of the piece of paper needs to be we could have sneaky classes to hi tiny cat where were you earlier we needed you we needed you to settle a dispute. You gonna come upstairs? Are you gonna come on the desk? No? All right, fine. Tiny Cat says, bye. Okay, so the size, I'm gonna tell you the size that I'm gonna make these, that these pockets are. So you can ignore That was, oh, oh, so Priya says that she interpreted Tiny Cat's meows to mean cayenne. And she left in disgust. I see. Okay, so six and a half by five and a half is the measurement for the angled pocket. So this is for the angled pockets. Now, it, of course, if you follow it like it is in the in the manual the pockets will go all the way to the top like this one the pockets will go all the way to the top okay so 
Um, so we need one, two, three, three. All right, so we, we do need eight. So we need eight of these. Okay. So I have good news to start with, which is what do these two numbers add up to? What do these two numbers add up to? add up to 12, which means we can do the five by seven pinwheel. We can do the five by seven pinwheel. Wait, we could do it straight? No, we can only get three if we do it straight. We need an official song for the five by seven pinwheel. We do, and we're gonna need a fat. All right, let me get a piece of 12 by 12 paper. So, if you cut it at six and a half inches, you can get two five and a halves out of this six and a half inch strip. But then you have a five and a half inch by 12 inch strip and you can get one five and a half by six and a half and then you have this leftover piece you can't do anything with. But if you do the five by seven pinwheel or in this case, the six and a half by five and a half inch pinwheel, then you can get four. So, I'm gonna put my cardstock at five and a half inches. You need a trimmer like this where you can start and stop the blade wherever you want. And I'm gonna cut up to five and a half. I'm gonna turn it towards my elbow, one turn, put it back at five and a half, cut up to five and a half. And what pops off here is a six and a half by five and a half inch piece. Turn it again, put it back at five and a half, cut up two, five and a half again, six and a half by five and a half inch piece falls off. Turn it again, put it at five and a half, six and a half inch by five and a half inch pieces. Both of these, see exactly the same size. This is your leftovers. Four out of one, like magic, like magic. And then these are from the scraps from making these. And then I'm gonna make one, um, <laughs> I'm gonna make one Franken paper. because I didn't want to cut into another sheet. So we have a Franken paper. So now I've got eight of these. Ta -da. There you go, magic, magic. All right, so I'm now rogue, I've gone totally rogue. I'm gonna tell you these, where to score these because of course I've gone totally rogue. Six and a half inch side, score at one and five and a half on and on the five and a half inch side score at four and a half so
So this is for the angled pocket. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use scraps to make a template for cutting our pocket. Anyway, greetings everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am doing a stream tonight to benefit the Bahamas Red Cross. And the tutorial that I'm working from, if you purchase it, I'm giving all the proceeds to the Bahamas Red Cross. For anyone who purchases it between now and 11.59 p.m. Eastern USA time on Sunday, September 8th. So between now and then, between now and then, the proceeds will be going to Bahamas Red Cross because of Hurricane Dorian being kind of a snot. And basically just decided it's never going to leave the Bahamas. So we need one more five and a half inch by six and a half inch piece and then we'll use that to make the the angle Thank you to everyone who shared tonight's stream. I really appreciate it. I am making a type of pocket called a rose pocket, although apparently it will, if you guys, if we raise enough, if we raise a thousand dollars, for the hurricane relief, um, we will rename it the Dorian Pocket. It will be renamed the Dorian Pocket. All right, once you've done your scoring on all eight of your pieces, it's time to what? What's it time for? right it's time to hydrate <laughs> it is always time to hydrate but it's time to fat slab fold along all the score lines and burnish but yes hydrate hydrate time to hydrate This was known as the Rose Pocket because the first variation was shared by a crafter named Rose. Now it's the Dorian Pocket. There we go. Do I have my Limeade Plus with me? No. It's in the fridge. I even, I made one and I just forgot to bring it up with me. Because I was like, if I'm doing a rose pocket, I'm getting drunk. But then I just forgot. I just forgot. So I ca how can you have a hurricane party without booze? But I don't know. I guess I'm doing it. I'm having a dry hurricane party, which sounds pretty lame. 
Oh, Sage, that's good news. I'm glad that your family in Florida is totally safe. Dorian's favorite color is cayenne. Text Mr. Lifeguard to bring it up to you. I should. Like, Mr. Lifeguard, get up here with my booze. It's in the fridge. So, gonna tape all our flaps. You know the drill. The digital paper I'm using is Story of My Family by Echo Park. And I got it from Snap Click Supply. Did I know, know Dorian is a vampire? Well, a friend of mine and I were trading Dorian Gray jokes. Um, so, like, um, you know, uh, uh, Hurricane Dorian jokes never get old. And then um, she responded to something about it with get the picture. And then I said, never speak to me again because I hate your stupid hurricane puns, I think. But... Um, the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde is about um, a young man who's so beautiful and a picture is painted of him and he wants to just look like that forever and so he does, he never ages. Um, and he always looks beautiful, but the picture ages instead. And as Dorian gets more and more like diseases and scars and other horrible things from his horrible lifestyle, those all go on the picture because um, it reflects his ugly soul. Um, did he drink blood? No, not to my knowledge. I think it was just like one of those things that happened so that Oscar Wilde could tell a story about what was real. Or, you know, he wants to, about, you know, that you're, it's just not your face that matters. It's your soul. You know, no amount of makeup can hide an ugly heart. That's, uh, Kevin Aquan said that. Um, same idea, you know. Gosh, we're philosophizing again. Someone get the philosographer. Trank him. Um, the book that I talked about was uh, Midnight's Children uh, by Salman Rushdie. Yeah, I mean, if you want to think of what kind of a vampire Dorian Gray is, you could think of him as a psychic vampire um, and that he feeds off the life energy of the people around him because the people, the more time you spend with Dorian, the more miserable and sad you get. Um, That's me, Catherine Scraps, the philosopher, crafter, the philosopher, crafter. Well, the psychic vampires, not to get too like metaphysical about it, but there are people who put more into relationship and um, the other person only takes out. And, and so that can be very draining on you, you know, and it can be very depressing. So, you know, there, um, there is a reality of mental, mental health and relationships that 
does link up with, I guess, this idea of the psychic vampire. Yes, Fran, Oscar Wilde did have a very, very tough life. He really struggled. He struggled. He had a lot of internal struggles and a lot of external struggles. He struggled both. Wow, we got we got deep, guys. We got really deep just now. <laughs> See, this is why I think we should start a book club. I think just one show a month, you know, then what we'll talk about while we're crafting is a book. I think I think we could do it. I have some ideas. I have some ideas for books. I know it depends on the book, the book. We probably won't start with a picture of Dorian Gray. And uh, they already said nothing scary, so we won't do anything scary. Basically, I want books that are not too hard to read. I don't want people to struggle. It's not like a chore. Um... But not totally like breezy, chiclet, like you already know the whole plot and how it ends within the first chapter of picking it up. So somewhere in between those two extremes. And hopefully something that'll make you think. Barbara wants to go to detention. <laughs> She's already in detention. No, not political. Well, I mean, there's political and then there's political. Uh, and what I mean by that is that there's a way in which politics and, and culture can be entwined. Um, that's very normal. And then there's a way for it to be like overt, right? So, um, you know, we, you're, you're, everyone who's writing a book is a product of their time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to be totally non-political in other words, cause then you, you're not making any statements at all. Um, and then that's, you kind of then is it, probably, you're not going to have something truly thought provoking. Um, but overtly political, like books about the government or about politics, no, we can definitely skip those. Because I don't think politics makes particularly good culture um, or particularly good, you know, entertainment. Because politics should follow culture, not the other way around. I don't think it should drive it. Yeah, if we don't get enough people in the book club, we can pick uh, interesting ideas. Why don't we... <laughs> jo Joanne has suggested reading the National Enquirer from front to back and then discussing that. All right, well, Joanne has spoken. Joanne has spoken. Um... Now that I have all my tape down, I'm going to burnish all my tape. And then we're going to get a scrap piece of cardstock. And we're going to um, cut the angle 
onto the scrap and then trace that scrap onto all these pieces. We are not using the three envelope version. I didn't do that one because it requires a specialty envelope called a catalog envelope that is not easy to get on short notice. So I am doing the one called folded pocket version, which is the one where you make the pockets yourself out of cardstock because I figure everyone has cardstock. But I've changed the size of the pockets to six and a half by five and a half. And I scored them on the six and a half inch side at one and five and a half and on the five and a half inch side at four and a half. So that's the change I've made. Now I'm going to angle the pockets. And I need to be careful when I angle them. All right, BTT. So this is now six and a half by five and a half, which makes it the same size as the pockets. And we are going to turn it into um, we're going to angle it. So I'm going to draw a line two inches in from one of the long sides. And I'm going to draw a line three inches in from one of the short sides. And the reason I'm drawing that line three inches in is I have to account for the score. All right. And so then I'm also going to draw a line one inch in. So I just, so I know where the score is. Okay. Then I'm going to connect this corner and this corner with a diagonal line. So okay, and then I'm going to remove this panel and this panel and that will make my template. All right. So this is two inches. This is one inch. And then this is another two inches. Okay. <coughs> so in order to remove these two, I'm going to cut in to here and then up. It's very, very simple. Okay, so that's the template. Now, do not go in and mark all your things, okay? Because they are gonna be going different directions all the time. So you have to decide which direction you want them to go before you, you cut them and put them down. So this is the first page as far as I'm concerned. This is page one, okay? And I want it to angle down towards the right. So I'm going to take this and this is angling down towards the right and I'm going to put it on the back. The reason I'm putting it on the back is because um, my cardstock is so dark I need to use a white gel pen and I don't want any of that white gel pen to show. Above my pocket. Once it's in the book. And so then I just cut 
If you're not comfortable with scissors where you feel like you can cut like this, go ahead and use a ruler. All right, and so now, see? Voila, it folds into a cute little angle. How's that? All right, so to reduce the bulk in the corners, I'm gonna cut through the intersection made by these score lines. So cut, just cut through that intersection, cut right through it as if it's like an X and you're cutting through the center of the X. And then you should be able to fold them back, see, and have them meet up. And then go ahead and peel your tape and stick it down. So All right, now I'm gonna stick this down and I'm gonna line it up with this score line and the bottom edge because if it hangs over at all, I want it to hang over the other side. I don't want it to hang over the score line. But it doesn't hang over because I'm good at crafting. So there you go. All right, so that's pocket number one. Pocket number two, we want it to angle down to the left. Yeah, okay. You can save these cutoffs for photo corners. So what you do is you fold them, fold them, and then you cut it in half from corner to corner, like so. And now you have a photo corner. and it's already taped. So fold in, fold in, cut corner to corner, and there you have another little photo corner. So that's what Bev means. When she says save them for photo corners. All right, so now we need to angle to the left. All right, so we just get it angled to the left, put it on the back, flip it over, trace. And then cut. And then cut. And then cut these. Test. All right, and then it just goes right down like so. So once again, this is a disaster relief stream for the Bahamas for Hurricane Dorian. And I am making this pocket and the tutorial that accompanies this product project, I will donate the proceeds from the sales of tutorials now through Sunday to Bahamas Red Cross. All right, so we've got that. So we go to the next angle. This one goes to the right, so we hold it to the right, put it on the back, then we can just flip it over and trace it and cut it, and so on and so forth. So even though we made the pockets more complex, it's still going fairly quickly, I think.
So not too terrible. This isn't possibly not the worst project I've ever done in my life. But ask me again when I'm trying to still decorate this thing at 2 o'clock in the morning. How I like Dorian pockets. Jo Joanne said I'm recording that statement. High praise. Catherine describes doing a Dorian pocket as not the worst thing that ever happened to her in her life. It's true. I haven't used the photo quarters much since I stocked up on the punches. It's true. All right, flip it again. And this one we want it to come down because we want it to meet this one from the front. So we need to come down to the right. So thank you to everyone so far who has purchased the Trifolio tutorial. I was hoping to get to $500. And we were at $386 last time I checked. So well on our way. And I said if we got to 1000 then I'd make another one of these with the Cayenne base that you guys actually technically voted for. That's why you have to do them one at a time, Donna. That's why you do them one at a time. That way you won't mess them up. All right, peeling the tape, sticking them down. All right, look, so you should have two V's on this inside spread, okay? Two Vs. So now I'm gonna flip it around. So we're gonna flip it around. And with these, these just are gonna face each other. So I'm gonna do this one and this one needs to come down to the left. So I hold this the direction I want it Yes, that's totally fine, Nancy, because we know exactly how much money of each order that contains one of these needs to be sent over. So we already are all set. So do not worry. You absolutely can purchase other things and it's not going to mess up anything for the donations for disaster relief. And thank you for your order. We appreciate it. Just check. Yep. Peel the tape, stick it down. You've got it. You've got it. It's just a system. It's all see, this is why if you were if you're like, why does Catherine hate Rose Pocket so much? This is why. Because everything that you do, you have to do it five thousand times. 
literally 5,000 times. I know I said eight pockets, but by the time I'm done doing eight pockets, I will have somehow, through a fold in the space time continuum, done 5,000. All right, and so now this one we know needs to come down to the right. So I just hold it in that position and put my pocket on top and then trace it on the back. That's why I made this template the size of the unfolded pocket so that it would be easier to line it up. This video will be available on my YouTube channel. I'm not gonna take it down. It will also be in the archives. <laughs> Past Catherine was thinking, she occasionally does. She occasionally does. She's just not consistent about it. The, the tutorial does not show how to do this angled pocket. So what the tutorial will show you is how to do these pockets all the way to the top. All right, all the way to the top. But if you wanna do these angled pockets, take a screenshot of this. That's the size, okay, that's the size. All right, so instead of whatever size it says, it says cut up to 10 of, you know, eight and a half by 32, whatever it says. It says cut up to 10 of those. Instead, cut eight of these. Just cut eight of these. And this video will be, I'll tell you what, I'll put this video in the trifolio, trifolio folder as well. Okay, so it'll go in the archives, it'll go in the trifolio folder, and it'll stay on YouTube so that you have it with a tutorial. So screenshot of that. Oh my gosh, I'm so generous when hurricanes are happening. <laughs> and of course, in addition to being generous, I am humble as well, as always. I'm the most humble person I know, really, so. Okay, so now that we've done these two and then these are gonna stay flat, then we have two more angles. And again, we'll do one left and one right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one left and one right, just do them both at the same time. This must be future Catherine. I know, future Catherine's a psycho, is a psychopath. She's the one, she's the one that we're all, she lives in the darkest timeline, guys. She lives in the darkest timeline. We better hope she never makes it here and becomes present Catherine. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, those of you who have already bought the tutorial, when I add this video to the tutorial folder, it will email you or it should email you if you subscribed to that folder in case there were updates. Man, people who bought this tutorial years ago and then weren't on Facebook today are gonna get an update to that folder and be like, what the heck? Why is she making updates to folders of three-year-old projects that she swore she would never do again as long as she lived? Uh, 
Um, my scissors are Singer. Um, and they are razor edge sewing scissors. And people, people get stressed about this all the time that I use sewing scissors for cutting paper. Let me explain that you can use sewing scissors to cut paper as long as the only thing you cut with them is paper. Okay. So the problem isn't that sewing scissors have some kind of mystical property where, um, that's absolutely fantastic. Kimberly, it goes until Sunday. So there's plenty of time, um, where they explode or something. If you use them to cut paper, you just can't use scissors that you are going to use to cut fabric to cut paper. Okay. So that's why I have these also, these ones only cut fabric. These ones only cut paper. So, and I think sewing scissors are great for cutting paper and you can get them sharpened at Joann's, um, when they, when you need to from when they get, when the sewing scissor man comes, when the scissor sharpener guy comes. So, All right, so now I'm, the cheetah ones are great, aren't they, Donna? I got them like forever ago when I was the costume mistress of um, a, col a play in college and then I stole them from, the <laughs> and then I stole them from the production because <laughs> I, I was like, well, these are mine now. It's part of my salary. It's a, it's a keepsake. So those I've had since, well, I graduated college in 2002. So I've had them for a long time. Singer is now a desperate for Catherine not to do a, <laughs> like people never steal. People do nothing but steal from the drama department. That's why everything in a drama department sucks because everyone stole the good one and the only the crappy stuff is left. So <laughs> that's why. So look, I didn't do anything unique. Okay. I suppose I could donate a pair of sewing scissors to my college's, um, uh, theater society which I'm still on the Facebook group of maybe I'll just like randomly mail them a pair of scissors like <laughs> they just will get like a, a pair like just one day a pair of scissors will happen will s come with no note or maybe we can think of some kind of like cryptic note to write um so <laughs> Debbie is like <laughs> Debbie <laughs> I wasn't 25 yet. My brain was not fully formed. Please don't steal from your costume department at your college. It's a crime, technically. Okay, we've got them all down. All right, so to, to recap, so why do you think, I hope, my col I hope my college is not watching this video, but even if they are, what are they gonna do to me? I'm sure the statute of limitations is up on petty theft. <laughs> That was past Catherine. It was a different person. We should all mail a pair of scissors to our colleges the same week and see if it makes the news. The exact same pair of scissors. So it's like a random, like a weird coordinated. Okay. So here we're done. We're done with construction, everyone. How excited are you? Did you believe it would ever happen before the heat death of the universe? I know I didn't. I know I didn't. So we have finished the construction of the book. So now we just need to um, trim this. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in an eighth of an inch from every line. And then this should mat what should be left is a mat, something that we can use to make a mat. And then this side I need to come in an inch and an eighth because uh, I have to make an allowance for the folder. And then come down an eighth of an inch. And then once on the angle as well. And then this should be perfect for matting because we're going to have to use a template for all our mats, but let's, okay. It would be perfect. I should have come in an inch on the bottom, an inch and an eighth instead of an eighth on the bottom. So I'm going to cut another inch off and then it'll be perfect. Yep. Let me grab another piece of paper so you can see. It's going to follow it all the way around. We're going to have one eighth of an inch. So you can cut once you're done with the larger template, you can cut it down to the to the smaller template. So you cut off an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, one and one eighth, one and one eighth, one and one eighth. OK, so on the two sides and the bottom, one and one eighth inches and then on the top and the angle, one eighth of an inch. And then you have a perfect template now for your matting papers. So now what we need to do is we need to measure it so that I know what size to cut my paper. So it's, oh, it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. It's four and a quarter inch square. That's pretty sweet. All right, so I'm gonna do a recording break here so that the construction portion is in its own video. And then the decorating or the matting will be in another video. Um, but so far, this is, this is where we are and we're doing really well. We're doing really well. So um, thank you so much to everyone who's watching. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, you have until Sunday, September 8th at 11.59 p.m. to purchase this tutorial and have the proceeds go to the Bahamas Red Cross so you can feel good about your purchase. Um, links in the video description to the tutorial and to the Bahamas Red Cross if you'd rather make a donation directly because you don't need a tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications so you know when I go live for my regular Thursday shows. And have a great afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time it is where you are when you're watching. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.